Praise God, praise God. Oh, I tell you what another wonderful day that the Lord has made. I, I, you know, I say that all the time because it's the truth and I have nothing else better to say, but God is so good and he is so merciful, so kind. He is so loving. And you know what? I just thank God, you know, that each and every day I can go before him because, you know, in the, um, the book of Hebrew, in that fourth chapter, in the 16th verse, he tells us that he gives us a privilege and an opportunity to do something. You know what he said? He said, we can come boldly, boldly with confidence into the very presence of him at the throne of grace, that we may find mercy, oh, listen, and grace in time of need. And you know what? This is one thing I thank God for because, you know, without him, what could we do? And, you know, I have a wonderful message today. And I believe like coming, you know, I won't say into this season or what have you, but it's every day. And I believe that peoples need to know about God peace. And you need peace in your life. And I want, I'm going to talk about that today because I truly believe, listen, I believe that when you know where your peace come from, then you'll understand that it doesn't matter how the storms are coming, how the wind are blowing, and what people are saying, and, and all of this coming up on you, when you can have God's peace. Oh yeah, you can have peace. Now, I'm not, now, let me make myself clear. There will not be perfect peace on this earth until Jesus come back. Okay, I want you to understand that. But he do tells us in his word that we can have the peace of God. And I'm going to show you how you can have the peace of God of God. Now, because he even tells us in his word that, you know, we ought to be peaceful with, you know, with, with other people. But, you know, you just sometimes you just can't have peace with some people. I mean, you just can't. But you can have peace. Hallelujah. Deep down within your innermost being, you can do that. And I'm going to teach that. I'm going to preach that. I'm going to do something here today. Hallelujah. Because I tell you, I feel pretty good. Oh, boy, I tell you. You know, God knows just what you need. I want you to understand that. He knows just how much you need. God knows that because, see, he knows your mind, your thought, even before you began to think it. And the Bible tells us he knows the heart. You know, I believe if people was to understand that, I, and, and really, really, really study the Word of God and believe God. I know people think money can get you by. No, money, can't, money ain't going to get you by. Money can go so far. But can I tell you something to help you today? When you have Jesus Christ, listen to me, because in the book of John, in that uh, sixth chapter, in that 14th verse, you know what he says? In the, in the 14th chapter, in the 6th verse, I'm sorry, the 14th chapter, in the 6th verse, you know what he said? Let me tell you what he said. He said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. L-I-F-E. I am the life. Now, listen, if you ever understand that, you're looking at a woman, and I'm a living testimony to let you know that Jesus Christ you need him. Oh, I know what most people's going to say. Oh, I know what they're going to say. They're going to say, oh, honey, I got a bank and a kind, honey. I don't need Jesus. I don't need this. That's all right. I'll tell you something about your money. Listen, all of that going to, see, that's material stuff. And that don't last. Because you know what? It's a, it's, it's something can happen, a sickness or something can happen in your life right now. And if you've got 20, uh, now let me put it up a little high, $50 million, it may take more than that because that's your loved one and you have to give it all away. So let me tell you, you need Jesus. 
you know, I, you know, I am, I'm just, I'm, you know, I'm very bold when it comes to God's word, and that's wherever I go. And, and, and I'm gonna have to shut my mind because I can get to talking. But you know, on the, it's, it's December 9, December the 10th, I'll be leaving for Nairobi, Kenya, and I'll be gone for a month, and I'll be re returning back. Uh, I don't know will I return back January the 10th, but we'll leave Kenya January the 10th, 2020. So you know, I am just so happy that I may be able. Oh, I tell you the truth. Mm, you know, oh, I, t I listen. I'm just happy. Let me put it that way. I don't know no other way to put it. I'm just happy. I'm happy in the Lord. I'm joyful in the Lord. And believe me, I have peace. <laughs> And I'll tell you about it. Praise God. Listen, and oh, let me also make mention also, this is, the, I know this is December, and I, I don't like to say that because I don't know when they're going to be playing the, these uh, uh, taping. But anyway, in January, February, and March of 2020, you know, that's when we are beholding, I will be holding uh, the camp meeting in Shreveport, Louisiana, which I do every year. So I want you to make preparation for that. Make preparation for that because we are going to have a wonderful time in Shreveport, Louisiana, which is my hometown. That's where I'm from, praise God. I own two beauty salons down there in Shreveport because I am a licensed cosmetologist. And I thank God for that. And I just tell you, you know, Oh, let me hush, because see, if I don't, if I don't shut up now, I won't. So let me, let, let's have a word of prayer. I tell you, because see, when you get up early in the morning at five o'clock and you, be, you go into the very presence of God, I mean, he stirs the spirit and the spirit is in your innermost being here. You don't work with the mind, it's the spirit, praise God. And you just, I mean, you just be so happy and joyful and peaceful, oh boy, because you know that God will never, he will never let his children down, praise God, let us have a word of prayer. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, thank you for another day and another opportunity. Father God, to give me, Father, this opportunity to stand to proclaim your word. Father God, and I pray that everyone that have an ear, Father, will listen to what thus said the Lord. And I thank you so much, Father God, for all that you do. You know, Father, I pray that each and every one that are here in the broadcast right now, I pray, Father God, that they would get the Bible. I I pray, God, that they would just, Father, follow along because I'm going to give many scriptures to help them know, Father God, that in the day and time that we live with everything, the killing and all of this stuff, everything, all the political stuff, all of this stuff that's going on, Father, we need Jesus Christ. And we need the peace of God. We need peace. And Father, I just pray in Jesus' name that Father, the Holy Spirit, Father God, would give me the words to speak, Father God, that they would have, all those that are listening, would have a, a, a ear to listen and to do and to act upon, Father God, what does said the Lord, not what Pastor Jerry said, but what does said the Lord. Father, thank you for this opportunity in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and thank God. Praise God. Now listen, if you have your Bible, I pray that you go and get it because you really need to know about the Word of God, what God is saying to us, because, listen, uh, he spoke in time past, according to the book of Hebrews, that first chapter, he spoke in time past through the prophets, but now he speaks through, to us through his son, Jesus Christ, which is his Word. Yeah, he and sometimes he may speak audible, I don't know, but I know every time he speaks to me is through by the Holy Spirit or through his word. I know that. I can say that I can stand here it, it, without listen, it without even feeling like, you know, no, that's not right, Pastor, that's not right. No, I know what God does. Because you see, when you stay in the word of God, and this is where people have really have really, listen to me good, they have really left God's Word. They have left the Word of God. I, and I know what I'm talking about because you see I travel and they have left. People, that all they want to do is do one thing. And can I tell you what that is? They just want to go what they call the church. 
and that's, that, that's not pleasing unto God because, see, we must have something to act on, and we must act on the Word of God. You know, I remember my daddy would always uh, tell us, if you don't stand for something, you fall for anything. And the something that I'm speaking of is His Word. You ought to stand on the Word of God. That's the reason my message today is lay hold on the Word of God lay hold on the Word of God. That's what bring about peace. And I'm talking about peace within. Because remember I told you at the beginning, there will never be perfect peace until Jesus come and split the eastern sky. And when he set the, his kingdom up on this earth, let me tell you, then there will be peace. Where even the little baby can lay down with the lamb, can lay down with the, 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 the snake or whatever, can lay, I mean, there will be peace. There's not gonna be any, no turmoil. But see, now Nah, it's so much going on. You know, this, what I did, I turned and said something I don't like to do is listen at the news because, I mean, it's getting bad. At, whew, my goodness. Boy, and I turned it on, and I saw wherever the people just getting, I mean, they're just shooting. If they ain't shooting, they stabbing. You know, that's the reason I know that something is wrong. And what is wrong is that people don't have a concept of the Word of God. I know, because you see, you know, you may look at me now and think I was like this way always. No, I was. I mean, I wasn't cutting up and shooting nobody, believe that. But I mean, I was out there in the world. I was out there. And it's worse today. It's worse today. That's the reason why I want to help you to know that if you have the peace of God, you can make it in this world. I, Cause see all of this stuff that's going on, it's a lot of stuff. It's a lot of stuff going on. I mean, and it is not, listen, I mean, it's bad. It is terrible. Oh boy, I tell you, I don't wanna just go all the way through all of that stuff, but anyway, you, you know, but you need Jesus Christ. And I'm gonna say this. Now, if you really don't have a know about Jesus Christ, you can always, I think I come on, I think I come on every day, really, because I come on at 10 and 6, 10 a.m., 6 p.m., I think some, some days, and I know I come on a Wednesday at 8.30 p.m., Saturday at 1.30 p.m., and Sunday at 7 p.m., but the other days I come on 10 a.m. and 6 p.m., so listen, this would, it would do you so good if you would just t tell others about it. And listen, God wants to meet your need. Cause let me say this. Now, you know, I have a prayer line and, uh, and, and, and I have a PO box and I get letters and I get called. And do you know what? People are suffering. Now, when I say people are suffering, I'm talking about the people that go to church. They are suffering, and I mean bad. I mean terrible. And then, you know, you know, I can't help everybody unless you watch the broadcast because I can't go to everybody's house. Although, I mean, you know, I can't do that. That's the reason why I'm so thankful that, you know, oh, I, and I got to tell this too. You know, and, I, and, and the Lord brought it back to me uh, this, early this morning, early this morning. You know, it was some years ago, and then I had to go and repent unto God because I didn't, I, I said, oh, Lord, I hope I didn't do wrong. I used to uh, pray for the young, uh, you know, peoples in Sudan and all these places, and uh, a, a, a lot of, I can't, uh, sw uh, I can't call the name of them right now, but he sent me a map with all of the countries that you know that you you could pray for and i took that map and laid it down in my prayer closet at home and i would go and kneel down every day so so many times and pray for that country pray for that country and i remember early this morning i remember i was used to pray for nairobi kenya <laughs> And guess what? I'm going over in Nairobi, Kenya. Praise God. And then I got to thinking, I said, Lord, where is, you know, I don't know where the map at because, you know, I move, you know, and I don't know where the map at, but I know how to start back to getting it. And I'm going to ask him to send me. It's a, it's a big ministry over somewhere in Philadelphia or somewhere. I don't know where it's at. 
But anyway, I'm going to ask them to send me another map because I want to pray. And I mean, I still pray for all the people all over the world, but I want to specifically kneel down in that country and kneel down in that country. Praise God. And see, God, we see when you have a hard desire for something, God will meet that desire, especially when it's going to glorify him. Isn't that wonderful? When it's going to glorify him. You know, I was uh, studying this morning in the book of, well, let me see, can I go to it right quick? In the book, and if you have your Bible, turn with it too, and then I'll get into the message. Just a minute. Uh, Psalm 50. Let's go to Psalm 50. I want to uh, read into your hearing uh, something here. Let me see, can I find it? Psalm 50. And you know what? This is one thing that I know that God is so able to do when He tells us to stand on his word. Okay, look at here what he said. He said, listen what he said, call upon me and I will answer thee. Listen, this is what, he, this is what, listen, this is what God is saying. Listen, call upon me and I'll answer you. And then he's, and see, and he gonna answer you. And this is what he said, most people miss this. Then he say, and glorify me. See, many times when God hear our cry and he come and meet that need or whatever it is, you know what we do? We just forget about it. We don't, we forget. but no, see, glorify him. That's the reason I glorify God for what he has done in my life. I mean, every minute, every day, I, I mean, whenever I can, even if I have to do it solemnly, Father, I praise you. You understand? You understand? Maybe you in the post office or somewhere. You can't. I, well, I was shot it out, but I mean, if the spirit leads me to do it, I'm not going to just do it. But just say it within. Glorify God for what He has done in your life. Many people don't. They, they you know what? They just think God supposed to do this and do this and do this and do. Yeah, He is God. Believe me, and He can do whatsoever He will. But isn't it something? Isn't it something when he tells us in the word of God in that in First Thessalonians, he said, pray without ceasing. And then you turn over to the book of Jeremiah 30, 33, you know what he said? Call upon me, I'll answer thee. I show you great and mighty things which you know now. Isn't that something? And why people don't do that? You know why? Because they don't know what's in the word of God. Let me say this and I'm gonna get into my message. You see this Bible that I have in my hand? This is the King James Version Bible. This one too. This one is raggedy, but I hold this one up. You know what? Every problem that humanity face is in the Word of God. You know, if I, if I go home and I lose this, my uh, I got a lot of them, but if I misplace, lose it somewhere, I miss go in, I'm just so happy and I miss the shop and, I, and, and throw it somewhere and I can't find it. And I said, now, where did I do with that scar? What did I do with it? And it, it may be four months before I, I keep saying, where would I? But you know what? It's a scripture. Listen to me. It's a scripture in the book, listen, of Isaiah, that you can go and stand on that scripture, and I guarantee you you'll find it. <laughs> Woo. What I'm trying to tell you, listen to me good. What I'm trying to tell you is that, listen, is that God has already supplied everything through his word. From Genesis 1-1 to Revelation 22-21, your answer is in the word of God. Now, people don't know that because they don't know the word of God. But when you study God's word, that's where, listen, you receive the peace of God. Let's get into this message. Praise God. Listen, the Bible in the book of uh Philippians 4, 7 is where I'm taking my text from, and I want you to go there. Go to uh, uh, Philippians. Uh, Philippians, okay. I got, to, I got to get a bigger desk here. This is too little for me. I need a bigger desk here because I, I can't have my Bibles. Okay, Philippians 4, 7. Okay, let's, let me read it. And the peace of God, now this Bible, this is not Pastor Jerry making this up. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding. See, that what you can't figure out, that's what you don't seem that you can solve. 
it tells you in the Bible, the peace of God, listen, which passes all understanding, shall, watch this, shall keep your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. That's the reason the Bible tells us in the book of Isaiah, the 26th chapter, in the third verse. You know what it said? Thou will keep me in perfect peace because my mind is stayed on him because Pastor Jerry trusts in it. You can't do anything but have that peace of God. You understand what I'm saying? The peace of God is what can maneuver you all through this day. All because see, we live one day at a time. And if you, listen, when the peace of God is not up here, but is in your innermost being, that, that deep put hidden in the spirit of man, when you have the peace of God, it is that undisturbable calm. It is that undisturbable calm. Now, before I get into, into the message, I hope this don't fall, I want to give you a description of peace, and I do have two, and I may not have the time to give it all. But I want to tell you the, uh, the peace, so I'm trying to help you, so that you, you, all of us, can walk in peace daily with God to have the peace of God. Now, wait, let me back up. Because you see, when you accepted Jesus Christ according to the book of Romans, listen, the fifth chapter in that first verse, you, you receive the peace with God when you became a child of God. All right? But the peace of God comes when you are being sanctified through the Word. Good God Almighty. You understand what I'm saying? Now let me give you an example of what I mean by peace. And I'm gonna try to give you both of those illustrations. But the first one I want to give to help you to understand, there was a king, and he was very disturbed, distorted. He was ve oh, he was very angry. So he asked one of his uh, servants, he said, I want you to go and get me an uh, artist. And I want that artist to paint me a picture of peace. Because if he could just see peace, Oh, he would have it. So he went, this, the servant went and got uh, the first artist to paint him a picture of peace. He put up the canvas. He began to paint trees, trees, birds flying, sun bright, flowers along the edge of the river. He stood back and he looked, he said, go get your king. The king came in, the king looked, he said, that's not peace. The king pointed at the servant and said, get me another artist, I want to see peace. He went and got another artist. He began to put little bushes and he drew a little lake with ducks and things swimming. He put a tree up there and he put geeses in the air flying in a beautiful blue sky and sun just as bright as it can be. He stood back and he said, wait a minute, one more thing. He went and drew another tree on that side and oh boy, it was just blue bit. Oh, oh, that tree was so beautiful. He told the servant, he said, go get your king. He went and got the king, and the king walked in with his head down, and he looked up. The king said, that ain't peace. He said, listen, I want a professional artist. I want him to draw me peace. I want to see peace. And the servant was, say, yes, sir, yes, sir. He went and got a professional, I mean a good one. And when he walked in there and he, looked around and he say, sir, did you say your king want peace? And the servant say, yes. He had three buckets of paint. He had brown, he had black, and he had red. He stood back as he put up his canvas, his canvas and he took that black paint bucket and he flashed it up on that canvas and he took the red and he flashed it up on that canvas and he took the brown and he flashed it up on that canvas. He stood back and he put a black cloud with bolstering of lightning and it was thundering. 
and he drew a tree that the wind was so bustering and just blowing and the leaves was just coming off that tree and that, and that tree was bending as the wind was blowing. And he looked back and he put up there another tree where the branches and things was falling to the ground because it was so dark and it was so storming and it was lightning and thundering. And he looked back, he looked at that tree and he said, just a minute. And he went God in his little brush and he painted a brown little bird nest up in that tree, right on the, in the, in, it, right in the crook of that tree. He put a little bird nest up there. And in that bird nest, out of all of this bustering wind and the lightning and the thundering, there was a little bird in that nest and that little bird was sound asleep. <laughs> sound asleep. And that, and that professional artist stood back and he said, now your king did want peace, right? He wanted to see a picture of peace. He said, well, go get him. And when the king came in with his head down and he looked up at that picture, he said, that's peace. Hallelujah. And you know, why would he say that peace? Because with all the wind and the storm and the lightning and the thundering going on, that little bird was in that nest sound asleep. I don't know what trouble you are having. I don't know what you are doing, what you're going. I don't know what it is. But if you have the peace of God, let me tell you something. Because see, the peace of God is way down and can't nothing disturb it. I wish I had the time to tell you about the cushion of the sea, but I'll tell you next time. Because that's let me know. Listen, let me tell you. And you could get that peace of God. Let me tell you how you can get it. I didn't even get it in my message. Let me tell you. But you can get it through studying his word. Studying his word. And stand on the book of Isaiah 26.3. And you know what Jesus said in John 14.27. He said, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as this word give it to you. Mm -mm. He didn't say, let, let, let me see, do I think I may have time to read that. Let's go to John. Go to John 14, 27 right quick. John 14, 27. Hallelujah. Isn't this good? See, he said, peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the word give. See, the word can't give you peace. They, they don't have it itself. Let, let me be, be on, tell the truth about it. But give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. That's how you receive the peace of God. Don't let nothing trouble your heart. And listen, don't be fearful of anything but God. And you can receive the peace of God. You can go through a trial. You can go through a storm. Let me tell you something. Now listen to me. You can go through all of that. It's not saying that, listen, when the storm comes and you're up against something, <clears throat> listen, it doesn't mean that you, because you're the Christian, because you're the believer, that you're not going to have this. Yes, you're going to have it. But just like Jesus told his disciples, let's go to the other side. Now, Jesus could have stopped right there and said, guess what? Wait a minute, boys. Hold on. You're going to have, you're going to have some trouble when you get in the middle of that sea. He didn't say that. Trouble was coming, but he didn't have to let them know that. Why? Because he was right there on the boat with them. <laughs> because, see, when you got Jesus in you, oh, yeah, you can face a storm. Because you know what? Jesus is going to take you to the other side. Listen, I want to hear from you. Write me, call me. If you have a prayer need, write me. And if you don't know Jesus Christ as Savior, Listen, right today, just ask him to forgive you of your sin. You want to turn your life over to him. And you know what he will do? He will save you. May God bless you, and I'll see you next time.